Today, I'm going to be beating Elden Ring with every enemy and boss converted into Melania without dying. And because I thought this wasn't difficult enough, to add an extra challenge, I'm also going to be swapping weapon for every major boss, so I can't just rely on one really powerful weapon to carry me through the game. This also gives me the chance to show off some insanely strong builds for fighting Melania that I've been testing over the last couple of months, and puts a constant drain on my runes, preventing me from getting absurdly overleveled. On top of this, every Melania has both of her phases, a ridiculously large aggro range, and does much more damage than the normal enemies she's replacing, even with the randomizer scaling her down. All of this together makes for the largest challenge I've faced so far, forcing me to use all my game knowledge and skill at fighting Melania to survive. Also, these videos take a really long time to make, so if you enjoyed this video, press all the buttons down below. Thanks. As with all Elden Ring runs, this one starts with setup, but since everything is Melania, things are a little more involved than normal. We have two major early game goals, the first of which is to get Assassin's Gambit. This Ash of War gives us a massive stealth buff that reduces enemies' aggro range by a considerable amount and silences our footsteps. It's pretty much a required item for traversing certain areas of the game where there's a high density of enemies. Even with this buff though, Melania's aggro range is still enormous, meaning we can't avoid her attacking us entirely in most situations, but at least she won't notice us running past as quickly, giving her less time to attack. Getting Assassin's Gambit isn't easy though, as it involves us making it all the way to Volcano Manor, the fastest and safest way to do so being Raya's questline, which means getting to Altus Plateau. This is where we encounter our first hurdle. To gain Altus access, we need to collect both halves of the Dectus, which means making it past all the enemies in Fort Tight, and more importantly, Fort Faroth. So to save myself as much time as possible, that's where I headed first. I picked up a couple of things on the way, like the Warrior Jar Shard for any builds that relied heavily on Ashes of War, a Grace by Banal, and the Physic. And upon making it to Fort Faroth, I noticed something interesting. I was gaining a lot of runes from something somewhere dying, about 12,000 each time. It took me many, many attempts before I realized what was happening, but eventually I noticed this Melania that had replaced a bird spawning up in a tree would occasionally fall off to her death. And since I started a samurai and had a bow, if she didn't happen to fall off herself, I could just shoot her down, making this a really convenient rune farm if I ever found myself slightly short. Before heading straight into the Fort Faroth death trap, I took the time to slowly bleed down Grail with my Uchi for an easy 150,000 runes, which I almost entirely dumped into Vigor, bringing it up to 40. This might seem very overkill, but Dragon Barrow is an extremely high scaling area, and even with this much health, I would still die in 1-3 to three hits from a Melania. Then it was finally time to face Fort Faroth. This was the biggest reset point in the entire run. I lost a total of 6 attempts here, which doesn't sound like a lot, but every time I died, I had to spend 20 minutes getting back, meaning I spent over 2 hours of my life doing this. Oh, I rolled in, man! Almost all of those deaths took place in the first room. There are 6 Melania in this room, the most important ones being the one closest to the entrance and the two closest to the ladder. I quickly figured out how to deal with the one at the entrance. By baiting her out of the room, I could have her drop down behind this wall, preventing her from getting to me. The two closest to the ladder, though, were a lot trickier. Up until attempt 9, I didn't have much of a strategy for this room. I was pretty much just gunning it and sticking to the left wall, then hoping for the best when it came to which attacks these two would throw out. This got me killed a lot, and retrospectively was a very idiotic way to go about it. Eventually, I figured out the very obvious solution of throwing a Kukri on this back wall to group all but one Melania. This meant I only had to deal with the RNG from a single enemy, as I was far enough from the rest that they would slow walk towards me. This made getting up the ladder a lot more consistent but there was one more thing I wanted from here. Radagon's Saw Seal was so close and provided a massive increase in stats, so I decided to go for it. Fortunately, I figured out very early on that if I threw a Kukri at this Melania blocking my path, she would dodge to the right, making her fall down into the main room. Then it was just a matter of grabbing the Saw Seal and memory of gracing out. Things get a lot more relaxed for a while after this point. After grabbing the grace outside the teleporter to Redarm for later, I cleared out the rest of Limgrave, collecting a few smithing stones, the Axe Talisman for extra charge attack damage, grabbed the other half of the Dectus from Fort Height, which isn't nearly as problematic, since the enemies aren't as densely packed and do pretty insignificant damage to our 40 Vigor health bar, and finally grabbed a Grace and Weeping next to this merchant that sells infinite Kukri. Then I headed over to Lyonia, where I collected the remaining smithing 1s and 2s, and grabbed a Grace by Bogart, who were gonna massacre in cold blood. To do that, we headed back to Gatefront, where we used a combination of making it nighttime to reduce enemies' visibility, and Kukri to bait them away to collect the Lord Sworn Greatsword, Iron Whetstone, and most importantly, the Flail, which we can use to completely stunlock Bogart. This progresses Raya's questline, but also gives us the Iron Balls, an insanely powerful weapon which is incredibly good for fighting Melania. From here on, this is what we're going to be using for any combat outside of major boss fights. It's perfect for that role since it doesn't weigh very much and doesn't require FP to be extremely effective. With everything sorted in the Urnia, we finally headed to Altus, where we immediately grab Smithing Stone Bellbearing 2. This allows us to get our balls to plus 12, which is a ridiculous amount of damage to have this 
early in the game. We then take our newly upgraded balls over to Banal, where we kill him in two hits. And... There you go. Now we can head back to Altus, where we take Raya's hand. Why is your hand wet? Transporting us to Volcano Manor, and finally giving us access to Assassin's Gambit. There we go. That's our first early game goal complete. The next is to get Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 1. Dropped by a boss at the bottom of the Raya Lucario Crystal Tunnel, which is normally an area I wouldn't even consider going into on a run like this, since there are so many enemies in such a small space. But unfortunately, it's absolutely necessary to do so, as we need the upgrade materials to level up a new weapon for every boss. But before we go and do that, we need to get another very crucial but awkward item to obtain. The Opaline Bubble Tear, dropped by an Erdtree Avatar in Weeping that's surrounded by enemies. This was a complete disaster on many of the earlier attempts, where most ended with me trying to awkwardly fight the main boss Melania while keeping an eye on three other Melanias training behind me. I never ended up losing a run here, but my strategy did get a lot more sophisticated, as I started constantly refreshing Assassin's Gambit throughout the fight to make sure I wasn't aggroing surrounding enemies. Now we had all the pieces we needed to take on the cave. The bubble tier was going to be incredibly useful for both running sections and bosses, as it gives us a completely free hit that doesn't even stagger us. From this point until the end of the run, it permanently held a spot in my physic tier. One last thing we did is equip this exact combination of armor. This gives us over 51 poise, preventing us from getting staggered by most of Melania's attacks, while also keeping us in the mid rolls. The cave starts out pretty straightforward, with a couple of rooms that you can easily run through, but then hits you with this. A narrow bridge with a Melania guarding the other end, followed by a narrow hallway with two Melania, leading into a room with five more Melania, three of them being passive. After throwing a Kukri to bait the Melania on the other end of the bridge, I only had one option, run. Okay, this looks good. I'm gonna drink bubble. I'm gonna gambit. And then we need to make a very scary run here. Actually completely fine. Gambit again. These millennia here won't aggro unless you take the rocks in the middle. So, we, you know, we're leaving them, which is a bit of a sad thing for our upgrade situation, but it's worth it because it's very risky to take them. Okay. Good. Fortunately, making it down to the boss room was the hard part, and the boss itself in comparison was very straightforward. This arena is completely fine for fighting Melania, and this is still a relatively early game scaling area, so the plus 12 balls are doing insanely good damage. Finally, our setup is complete. Now it's time to go kill some bosses. For Margit, I wanted to use something pretty good, since his arena isn't great for fighting Melania. There's extremely limited space, several obstacles, and the whole thing is on a slight slant, which makes certain dodges inconsistent. So I chose to use the Lord's One Greatsword that I picked up earlier in the Great Front Ruins. Greatswords have a very strong and comfortable moveset for Melania, and the Lord's One Greatsword gets a slightly higher crit multiplier, giving it a little bit of extra damage. I also grabbed Lightning Slash from this camp in Altus to use as our Ash of War. This is going to be a really important Ash of War that I use a lot on this run, and this Margit fight very clearly demonstrates just how powerful it could be. On a surface level, the damage increase from the Lightning Infusion, actual damage the attack does, and speed that it comes out seem to be its main selling points, but what makes this thing so much better than other options is its ridiculous poise damage. Lightning Slash on a Greatsword combos into an R1 for over 50 poise damage, making it so strong that in a perfect world where you have infinite FP, it's better to just always use Lightning Slash rather than a charge heavy. And towards the end of this fight, when I realized I had more than enough FP to finish her off, that's pretty much what I did. We're just gonna rely on Lightning Slash here. This is actually terrible positioning, but maybe we can push her out of it with the stagger here. Seems kind of alright. I'm just gonna immediately lightning slash again. Have enough flasks where I can just crutch it completely. Another lightning slash? Wow. There was one slightly scary moment where the elevation of the arena screwed me over, causing me to get hit, but apart from that, this fight was very straightforward, as this unupgraded Lord's One Greatsword output incredibly good damage. Stormvale was a surprisingly easy running section, the hardest part being this set of stairs with three millennia at the top, but with a combination of the bubble tier, gambit, and some good RNG, it wasn't much of a problem. Before we headed into Godric though, I took a little detour around the side of Stormvale to collect one specific item, the hook claws. This is an incredibly powerful 
powerful weapon for fighting Melania that also has innate bleed, making it a very attractive option for late game bosses that have enormous health pools. To get to it though, we need to pass 6 Melania, so I spent a very long time testing and came up with a strategy, which starts with me heading back to Altus to grab the Great Bow from this tower, which I did in the most scuffed way possible. My strategy was literally just bring these two Melania guarding the chest down and pray that they fall off. Fortunately, this worked largely due to the bubble tier and having 40 vigor. Now that I had the Great Bow, I could head back to Stormvale, where I walk all the way up these stairs to this exact point and cast Gambit. This puts me just barely out of aggro range of the closest Melania and allows me to shoot her off the cliff with the Great Bow. This does trigger another Melania to chase me, but by bringing her down to the bottom of the stairs, I can get her stuck. Then, after shooting this last Melania off, I Gambit, Bubble, and make a death run for the claws before memory of gracing out. Now, it was time for Godric. For this boss, I was going to use the Uchigatana, which I brought up to plus 6. That may seem a little overkill for such an early game boss, especially since the Uchi has innate bleed, but Godric's arena is unfortunately really terrible for fighting Melania. The actual usable space in the arena is limited to this small strip in the middle, as the rest is all gravestones she easily gets stuck on, and stairs that make dodging certain attacks impossible. Fortunately, this fight ended up going really well. Melania didn't go into any awkward spots, and the plus 6 Uchi output very good damage, especially when I used Unsheath, which I ended up doing a lot towards the end of the fight. It is ridiculous how much damage they gave to Unsheath. There you go. After a quick intermission to grab Godric's Great Rune, which provides a massive plus 5 in all stats, it was time to take on Radan. For this fight, we're using the Longsword, which I bought from the Twin Maiden Hosts at Roundtable and brought up to plus 6. This is another weapon that heavily relies on an Ash of War to perform well. The Longsword comes with Square Off, which is insanely strong for fighting Melania and honestly most things in the game, because it outputs so much poise damage so quickly. A Square Off R2 can be used in any of Melania's larger openings and does 40 poise damage, meaning she staggers in just two of these, making this Radan fight constant staggers, which was nice because aside from Square Off, the Longsword doesn't do much damage, especially only at plus six. This fight actually ended up taking almost four minutes, which is long enough for my bubble to expire, but I managed to stick it out without making a single mistake and got through without getting hit. Next up is DTS, and this is where the scaling of enemies really starts to ramp up. Taking a hit from this boss would at minimum be a third of my health bar, so knowing this, I chose a very powerful build for the fight. I went with the Battle Axe that I again bought from the Twin Maiden Husks at plus 12 with Lightning Slash. This was a very good decision. Lightning Slash on an axe does combo into an R1, but the poise damage the combo does is a far cry from the Greatsword. What axes do get though that most others don't is a very solid combo game combined with very good base damage. This is one of the few weapon classes that has combos outside of Ashes of War, in this case being every heavy attack comboing into a light attack. This extends your punishes, meaning you're attacking more and Melania is attacking less, and makes axes capable of keeping up with a better weapon in the game in terms of poise damage. Also, since they're pretty fast and have decent range, they're very comfortable to use, making this otherwise extremely scary fight a breeze. This was another hitless Melania. That's three in a row. As much as things were going well though, it's nothing compared to what comes next. This next running section is what I personally consider to be the hardest stretch of the run, and it's largely because whether you live or die is out of your control. But first, we run through most of Dell and collect a couple of major items, like the Star Fist for later, and the Ritual Shield Tower which is hugely important as it reduces incoming damage by 30% when you're at full health, making the likelihood that we get one shot with our bubble tier a lot lower. Then we make it to the branch section. Between us and the next major boss stands 13 millennia on a branch over an infinite void. And what makes this much, much worse is that this area and boss arena have a nasty tendency to lag. Oh, I fucking lagged again. If a major lag spike happens at the wrong moment, like when she does waterfowl for example, it's over for me. My strategy for traversing this section went through many iterations. The first thing I thought of was using the Ash of War through and through on our great bow to knock each millennia off, which is pretty effective but comes with a couple of problems. The first of which being this millennia on the hill that would hear the great bow and aggro to us, so each attempt at the branch had to start with fighting her. Once she's dealt with though, we're free to knock quite a few of the millennias off.
Then we arrive at another issue. The branch gets a lot thicker towards the bottom, making it impossible to knock off this clump of melania. In early attempts at this section, my response to this was bringing each melania down and taking them out individually, but that strategy proved very risky and resource inefficient, as the combination of lag and lack of space led to me getting hit a lot and drinking far too many flasks that I couldn't afford to waste before the boss fight. So after much deliberation, I decided to simply run. Genius, I know. Good RNG there. Good RNG there. No stabs. Oh right, yeah. I got both of them off, so this is just free now. Okay. Alright, we're we're so good. I wanna bring her out of this, I don't wanna fight in this alcove. If I bring her into towards far range there, we're pretty fucked. Insane backstab angle, but sure. I fucked up so bad there. Oh my god. Wow. I can't believe I made such a huge mistake. That's kind of insane. Oh my god. <laughs> that was really scary. I guess the first time in this room, it's felt like I've made a mistake and not just been screwed by the game. <laughs> that was such a fucking blunder, holy shit. I don't think I've made a mistake like that in 30 hours of Melania. Thank god for like a billion vigor and the uh... bubble. Otherwise, I was dead for sure. Okay, there she goes. That was a ridiculously close call. If it wasn't for Bubble Tear, Crimson Burst Tear healing me, Ritual Shield Talisman, and the exact amount of vigor I had, I would have died. If I chose to leave even a single one of those things behind in exchange for some extra damage, I would have been sent back to repeat the last two hours, all over one tiny mistake. Melania is a brutal boss. There isn't much time to relax though, as we're immediately taking on the next boss. Fortunately, Morgoth's arena is arguably better for fighting Melania than her normal arena, and the lag clears up in this area of Langdell, so it's a lot less scary than Gold Free. For this boss, I used the mace, which I again bought from the Twin Maiden Husks. I'm literally clearing out her entire shop. I brought it up to plus 12 and put Lightning Slash on it. Hammers are one of the strongest vessels for Lightning Slash, as it once again combos into an R1 for over 50 poise damage, but is also paired with the ridiculous Hammer Charge Heavy that does just short of 40. Unfortunately though, the unique moveset of the mace is slightly worse than the standard club moveset, especially the heavy attack which lacks the range to comfortably out space and punish some of Melania's attacks. This was actually really clearly shown in the fight as I slightly messed up the spacing on this punish, causing me to get clipped by her sword, something that never really happens with the other hammers. Aside from that one small stumble though, this fight went really well, as the mace put her in a state of near constant stagger. The run to the mountaintops was largely uneventful. There are a couple of groups of Melania that you have to run past, but they were easily dealt with using Gambit and a Kukri or Great Bow to bait them away. When we make it to mountaintops, the first thing I did was grab Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 3 and head back to round table to upgrade our next weapon. For Fire Giant, we're going to be using the Zweihander, which I picked up at this merchant at the bottom of Weeping. The Zweihander is a very powerful weapon that does ridiculously good damage and has by far the best moveset of its weapon class with these nice thrusting heavy attacks that have great range and perfect tracking. Using a weapon this good was necessary as Fire Giant is the first double millennia we're facing. Certain bosses have different entities for each phase, making them technically separate enemies, and therefore each are converted into separate millennia. So this 
fire giant boss is two back-to-back -back millennia. And what makes this worse is that the arena is all slope, making certain dodges I do where I crouch under millennia's attack not work. So on top of a double millennia fight, I also need to adjust my playstyle depending on how she's positioned on the slope, fighting against over a hundred hours of muscle memory. Here's how it went. I seriously got hit instantly. I can't believe I got hit the like literally the first attack that could have hit me. What an idiot. The big thing about this arena is that it's all on a slope. Which is very scary. Yeah, because of that, basically. Stagger. Fortunately, our damage is completely insane, because the fucking Zweihander is nuts. I fucking trolled. Okay, just... Oh my god, what am I doing? That was incredibly close. I made a couple of horrible mistakes, and even though I recovered, I decided it was best to memory of grace out, since I'd lost my bubble tier so early, used many of my flasks, and taken a pretty serious mental hit. I'm just gonna shut up and actually like focus on the game. Immediately upon starting attempt two, I did the smart thing and brought Melania up to the top of the arena, where it's slightly flatter. It's not a massive difference, but it makes a lot of sense to do everything I can to minimize the chances of me getting memed by the slope. Determined to make this attempt go better, I did this. I think I got slope memed there. Not a fan of this positioning. I try and force a ranged attack. Gotta punish that anymore after last time. Nice. I still made one small mistake, mistiming a jump attack, but overall I played this fight very well, sending us into another very tricky area. Farum immediately opens up with this huge group of Melania guarding a narrow hallway, but fortunately this was pretty easy to deal with. I figured out very quickly that by grouping them at the bottom of the stairs, I had just enough room to go around them without being close enough to get attacked. One very scary run down a narrow hallway past a Melania later, and we find ourselves in another awkward spot. While it's very possible that I could just bubble up and run 
on this part, it's too late in the game to risk, especially when there's a very real threat of being knocked off. So instead, I use the Great Bow to group up all the problem Melanias into this spot, and taking advantage of Through and Through's ability to pierce through enemies, landed one very satisfying shot, knocking them all off. <laughs> There they go. I think this is the only time anyone's actually found a practical use for through and through piercing things. I also picked up this Somber 7 and 9 on the way down to Godskin Duo to help us upgrade our next weapon, the Stormhawk Axe. This is one of the few times where it makes more sense for us to use a Somber weapon than a Smithing Stone weapon, since we can only get Smithing Stone weapons up to plus 18, where we can easily get Somber weapons up to plus 9. And we picked this weapon up from Nefeli Lu's Corpse in Round Table, so it's really easily accessible and is a very good option for fighting Melania, which we're going to need, but because this arena is terrible. It's full of little obstacles that Melania can get stuck on or push herself up against, making it impossible to dodge waterfowl, and towards the end of the fight, that's almost exactly what happened. That was such a mess. Fortunately, by being very conscious of her positioning and doing as much as I could to bring her away from dangerous spots in the arena, I managed to take her out without too much trouble. Oh, okay, it's over. That was extremely scary. This arena is a very scuffed place to fight Melania. What came next though kind of stumped me. The bird section is generally pretty hard on a normal run since there's constant lightning and many, many enemies, so predictably it's a problem when everything is Melania. And weirdly, the lightning is still here, despite the fact that the dragon that summons it is now Melania. I guess she's specked into faith or something. There is one other option though, bird skip. A difficult bit of platforming that you can do to avoid the bird section entirely. And all you have to deal with is one enemy. And no, it's not this Melania, it's your own hands, because this skip is very, very hard. The first thing I did was bait this Melania to the lift and make her fall down, so I had as much time as I needed to line myself upright. Then it was just a simple matter of doing five jumps. Very easy, and definitely wasn't extremely stressful and took a lot of practice. We've made it to Malaketh, the second of our double Melania fights, and we finally get to pull out the hook claws, which we picked up all that time ago in Stormvale. I brought them up to plus 24 and put Cragblade on them for a little bit of extra damage and poise. This fight was an absolute massacre. The hook claws are incredibly strong for fighting Melania because they can attack so quickly and have these long combo strings that do massive damage and poise damage. The standard combo is charge R2 into tap R2 into R1 and comes out so quickly that you can use it on almost any of Melania's openings. And if that wasn't enough, the frequency that you're hitting her makes bleed build up really fast, giving the claws even better DPS. Just watch. that this build isn't even close to being optimized, by the way. With all the multi-hit stuff, the damage is even more absurd. Yeah, go wash my short. For Gideon, we get a break from all the double Melanias and insanely high scaling, so we get a chance to show off something really cool that I generally wouldn't use. Morgoth's Curse Sword is a really strong weapon for fighting Melania because of its unique Ash of War that stunlocks her for five consecutive hits and deals incredibly high bleed buildup. I chose not to use it up until this point because it isn't particularly FP efficient, but since Gideon is just one Melania, it should should be okay. And it was fine. As expected, I ended up running out of FP really fast, which slowed the fight down a lot, giving Melania enough time to end up in a couple of awkward spots in this arena. On the upside though, when I did have FP and could use the weapon as intended, it took out massive chunks of her health bar. Maybe not the best choice for this run, but this weapon is actually really, really good if you're set up to use it. And hopefully the flashes of brilliance you see in this fight are enough to sell it to you. Consider that Gideon fight like the filler episode right before the climax of the show, because next we have two back-to-back -back double Melanias with the highest scalings we've seen so far. Fortunately, I planned for this and had two of the strongest weapons in the game for fighting Melania ready. First is the Spiked Cestus that I bought off this merchant in Dragon Barrow. This thing is very similar to the Hook Claws in that its main selling point is its extremely fast attack speed and versatile combo game, but it's also one of the hardest weapons in the game to use at its full potential, as a lot of the combos are conditional on Melania being stunned, meaning you need to play it by ear on most punishes and react quickly quickly to fully capitalize on each opening. When you do though, you can really shred her health bar and even put her in pseudo-infinite combos, assuming perfect RNG. The second weapon is the Star Fist. I don't think I really need to explain this one. This thing is literally the best weapon in the game, and it's insanely broken for Melania. You saw how insane the Iron Balls were earlier, it's just that, but with a little bit more damage and bleed. With everything prepared, I stepped into the Godfrey fight.
Oh fuck, I walked into it. She's dead here. Yeah. Nice. Can't believe I walked in too early. So stupid. I failed to really take advantage of the Cestus's combo game, largely because I was feeling pretty nervous at this point, which is also clear when I strolled right into Scarlet Aeonia long before it was safe. But with that being my only mistake, I think overall I played this quite well, conservatively but safely. I dumped the remaining runes I had into a few last levels of strength for an extra bit of damage on the Starfist, and trying very, very hard not to think about how many hours it took to get to this point, I entered the final boss. Finally. I was extremely scuffed. didn't roll when it- I fucking pressed roll, man. Ugh. Oh. Oh, my bleed, man. Nice. Oh, huge. Wait, is she dead? There it is! Oh my god. That was a lot of stress for a boss that I fought that much. I am very bloody. There it is. I beat Elden Ring with every enemy as Melania without dying. This was a fun challenge. Maybe if enough people want me to, I'll do it again at level 1. But we'll see. Thanks for watching.